Yes, today we are going to discuss the another important uh, sense organ that is ear. The ear anatomy part 1. In this chapter I am going to cover the gross anatomy of the ear. Uh, myself, Dr. Murali Darbadigal, Department of Shari Rechana, Gramin Arithic Medical College, Therdal. Uh, introduction. Ear is one of the special sense organ designed for the hearing and equilibrium of the body. So, the ear is divided into three parts, external ear and middle ear and the internal ear. So, this internal ear part has a two parts. One is a vestibular and semicircular part and another one is cochlear part. This cochlear part is related to the hearing and uh, vestibular part and semicircular part is related to the equilibrium of the body. So, if any patient came to the clinic with the problem related with the giddiness, a doctor should concentrate on the internal ear pathology of the patient. And this human ear can hear the sound waves uh, frequency or the waves uh, ranging the frequency from uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz. And another important information regarding the ear is reading aloud is the is a quicker way to memorizing. It means a person is reading aloud, then that person has the good memory power. So ear is situated in the temporal bone of the temporal bone of the skull. See here, this is the skull. So in this skull, we have labeled here. This is a part here. The ear is present here. So this is a frontal bone, parietal bone. This is a temporal bone. So in this temporal bone, the ear is situated in this area. Next. So the middle ear is uh, sorry your middle ear bones are fully formed at the birth it means the size of the uh, bone ear bones are equal to the size of the adult bones a tympanic membrane is originating from all the three germ layers all of you know endoderm ectoderm mesoderm this is a embryological germ layers these are gives arise to the organs but this is a tympanic membrane is a special thing of the tympan uh, special uh, thing related to the tympanic membrane is tympanic membrane has a three layers outer layer in this picture you can see see in this picture this is the outer layer, this is the middle layer, this is the inner layer. So the outer layer is originating from the ectoderm, middle layer is originating from the mesoderm and internal layer or inner layer is originating from the endoderm. It means uh, tympanic membrane is originating from all the germ layers. And internal ear, sorry, ear is divided into three parts, external ear, middle ear and the internal ear. The external ear is designed, see this is the external ear, this is the middle ear, this is the internal ear. The external ear mainly designed for the collection and conduction of the sound waves and middle ear is uh, going to intensify or intensify the sound waves, strengthen the sound waves. So that's called intensification of the sound waves. And next, uh, internal ear, it's involved in the conversation process that is a sound wave or wave energy is converted into nerve energy. Color, external ear, collection and conduction. Mid layer is intensification or intensifies the sound waves. And these waves are converted into nerve energy or action potential in the nerve by the internal ear or the inner ear. So come to the point, parts of the ear. The ear is divided into three parts, external ear, mid ear and the internal ear. See, this is the external ear up to the tympanic membrane. After the tympanic membrane, there is a cavity that's called mid ear. And after the cavity, there will be a, another part that's called by the name of internal ear. So this is the internal ear, this is the mid ear, this is the external ear. One by one, we are going to discuss the parts. See, the external ear. The external ear is further divided into three parts, auricle, external acoustic meatus and tympanic membrane. Brain. So in this picture you can see, see here, this is the external ear, this is called auricle or the pinna and second one is canal, this is called the external auditory canal or you can say auditory canal or acoustic meatus, anything. So then last one is the green color, the membrane like structure that is called by the name of, uh, that is uh, tympanic membrane. So the external ear, auricle, uh, external acoustic meatus and the tympanic membrane. So auricle is uh, not movable or not active in the human being because uh, muscles present in the auricle are uh, vestigial muscles. But in the animals, the uh, what you are calling auricle is still functioning because the muscles present in the auricle are working or uh, they are doing the function. And external acoustic meatus is not a straight, it is a yes shape 
and after the end of the extracostic extra meatus there will be a membrane that is called by the name of tympanic membrane so this is about the external ear next we are going to discuss about the middle ear so the middle ear is the cavity it consists the three part it is a cavity second one is inside the cavity there is a presence of the muscles and the bones so this is the cavity means it is a box like structure so this box like structure which is uh, made up of the wall so this is called by the name of this is a super inferior wall of the mid layer and this is the inferior wall of the mid layer this is a lateral wall lateral wall is formed by the tympanic membrane and medial wall medial wall is formed by the uh, vestibule or you can say internal ear in the gross and this is the posterior wall and here is the anterior wall is already cut and removed here the anterior wall is removed so this is the cavity so it means the mid layer consists the superior wall inferior wall lateral wall medial wall posterior wall and the anterior wall so inside this cavity inside this box it consists mainly three bones and two muscles three bones are one is the malleus another one is incus another one is the stapes malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane and incus is connecting to the internal ear and apart from these bones the two muscles are present there is a one is the tensor tympani and another one is the stapedius so this is about the middle ear and last one is the internal ear so the internal ear is also known as labyrinth see this is the internal ear and this is also internal ear two diagrams i put to one better understanding purpose see this whatever you are seeing the pink color this is the labyrinth outer part is called by the name of bony labyrinth and internally how this bony labyrinth will be there similarly there will be a membranous part will be there that is called by the name of membranous labyrinth in this picture you are going to understand see the outer part is called by the name bony labyrinth inside there will be a tube like structure will be there na slight pink color uh, so this tube like structure is called by the name of membranous labyrinth just you should understand this concept with the ball pen so the ball pen is there inside the ball pen ripple will be there so ripple should be considered as a membranous labyrinth and the outer surface of the pen is called by the name of uh, bony labyrinth and inside the ripple ink will be there that ink is called by the name of endolymph here and outside the ripple inside the pen there will be another fluid that is called by the name of perilymph so it means a bony labyrinth uh, having the fluid that is called perilymph and a membranous labyrinth consists of fluid that is called endolymph next uh, bony labyrinth is further divided into three parts that is called cochlea vestibule and the semicircular canal so you can see in this picture in this picture this is a cochlea and this is a vestibule dilated part and these are the canal like structures these are called by the name of semicircular canal but inside this the tube like structure will be there now there is a membranous labyrinth that membranous labyrinth is also divided into three parts that is a cochlear duct see this is a cochlea inside the cochlea this is a cochlear duct and second one is vestibule see vestibule here so the inside the vestibule there is a membranous part that is called by the name of utricle and saccules and see here there is a semicircular canals these are the semicircular canals inside the semicircular canals there is a uh, duct that is called semicircular duct so in short the internal ear is called by the name of labyrinth labyrinth is divided into two parts bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth the bony labyrinth further divided into three parts cochlea vestibule semicircular canal and membranous labyrinth which is present inside the cochlea it is called cochlear duct the membranous labyrinth present inside the vestibule that is called saccules and the utricles the membranous labyrinth which is present interior to the semicircular canal that is called semicircular ducts and in short how your ear is going to work the first sound waves are collected by the pinna and conducted to the uh, tympanic membrane by the external auditory canal and tympanic membrane start to move when tympanic membrane is vibrating then the vibrations are transport to the middle ear especially there is a bones ear ossicles then ear ossicles start to vibrate so when ear ossicles are vibrating the last part of the ear ossicle is the stapes the stapes is moving interior to the internal ear when it is moving interior to the internal in the internal ear there is a fluid then what is going to happen this is going to create the wave inside the internal ear fluid 
simple example when you are throwing the uh, stone inside the water how the waves are going to create similarly the foot plate of the stepis is moving inside the internal ear inside the internal ear there is a fluid that fluid is start to vibrate and fluid is start to vibrate then these vibrations are converted into nerve energy that is a auditory nerve by the help of the organ of corti we will discuss that point later so it means the sound energy or wave energy is converted into nerve energy then nerve energy carries the action potential to the temporal bone temporal lobe then you are going to understand the sound wave so you can see in this picture there is a movement this is a internal ear there is a fluid this inside the fluid there is a movement so in short the sound waves are first collected and conducted by the external ear and middle ear going to intensify then internal ear this wave is or sound wave is converted into nerve energy or action potential in the nerve and after that this action potential is reaching to the temporal lobe of the cerebrum and we are going to understand so this is about the gross anatomy of the ear